Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself, Amata, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what I have for you today, my friends, well we're going to kick things off with a couple of AMD pieces for you today. And the first of which is actually regarding the CEO, Dr. Lisa Su. What we actually have here is something rather historic, as the Global Semiconductor Alliance has appointed the first woman ever to chair its board back on Tuesday. If this, of course, is none other than Lisa Su. She is now their new chairwoman. As I said, she is the very first woman to be given that particular position. And vice chair actually went to Simon Seegers, excuse me, who is the CEO of SoftBank Group. So, as I say, this is a rather cool moment in history, I suppose. It's not a small note, but still a significant one, I would say. And, of course, of yet another thing that Lisa Sue has achieved. She is uh, quite the role model, to say the least. But we actually have something rather big from AMD to move on to from here, as we have a Next Horizon event having been announced by AMD. So essentially what we have here is that they have revealed plans to host a Next Horizon event on the 6th of November, which of course is going to be next Tuesday, and they're going to be, quote, discussing the innovation of AMD products and technology, specifically designed with a data center on industry-leading 7NM process technology. So obviously they haven't said what they're going to reveal, what they're going to be discussing. Obviously they've kind of given a hint with the data center. We're most likely going to be hearing about epic 2 there but the horizon name is definitely one that's going to raise some eyebrows as this is most likely a reference to the next generation of zen architecture so we're most likely going to be seeing zen 2 and with the comment on data center it's probably going to be epic 2 which is otherwise known as a rome so we could see that to reveal there learn more about what zen 2 has to offer will we see ryzen possibly i mean it's might not be the focus, but we might see it mentioned. Obviously, I don't want to hinge everything on this one comment about data center, but that does make me think that it's not going to be a focus. But of course, I could very much be wrong. It could be a full reveal, like, yep, here's what's going on. Yeah, you know, we'll do Epic first, and we've got Ryzen later, or the other way around. But we're most likely also going to be seeing, with the focus on 7NM, a showcase of the 7NM Vega graphics hardware. Obviously, given that they have said pretty much from the start that this is going to be data center first, that would also make sense for that comment as well. Either way, we're going to see Zen 2 in some form. It might be Ryzen, it might be Epic, it might be both, and it would also make sense to see what's going on with Vega 7NM as well. So this is going to be a big one to mark on your calendars for sure, because obviously we've seen lots of rumours, speculation, leaks, all, all that sort of stuff for Vega and of course Zen 2, but this is going to be our first real look at what AMD has up their sleeve for 7NM in terms of both Zen and Vega. Will we see a gaming Vega 7NM? Possibly, there's definitely been rumblings to that effect, but either way, we can expect AMD to release a ton of information about their future products, future roadmaps, all that sort of stuff. We might see a peek as to what they're planning beyond Zen 3, which of course is going to be 7NM+. Obviously, that's not at least planned until 2020, but they might just give us a new roadmap which hints at what they have planned. Or they might not, they might just focus on, hey, here's Zen 2 and hey, here's 7NM Vega. So it's going to be a big one, especially as, of course, everyone's kind of wondering what they're going to do in the graphics department versus NVIDIA. And, of course, in the CPU department, we have Intel having just released the 9900K and the rest of the ninth generation processors as well. So it's very much AMD's ball game at the moment to kind of answer and be like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a big one to watch, guys. But speaking of Intel, we actually have some bad news again for Camp Intel next. Just when you thought Intel might be catching a break with, well, everything, uh, there has been yet another side channel vulnerability for Intel CPUs discovered. Uh, security researchers have discovered another flaw which could allow people to leak encrypted processor data. Now, this particular flaw has been named Port Smash, and... This has been verified by these very same researchers on Skylake and Kaby Lake, but they have also suggested that AMD CPUs are likely to be impacted as well because of SMT. I do have a bit of a quote here. It says, quote, We leave as future work exploring the capabilities of ports match on other architectures featuring SMT, especially on AMD Ryzen systems. 
but they said in an email to zdnet.com that they strongly suspect that AMD CPUs are also exp um, going to be impacted by this as well. Now I do actually have a direct quote from the researchers who are four academics from the Tampere University of Technology in Finland and on, alongside a researcher from the Universidad Tecnologica de Havana in Cuba. Apologies for my pronunciation, it was probably dreadful, but I, I did my best, damn it. Anyway, they've posted a proof of concept of this new side channel attack, and they wrote, quote, We recently discovered a new CPU microarchitecture attack vector. The nature of the leakage is due to the execution engine sharing on SMT, or hyperthreading architectures. More specifically, we detect port contention to construct a timing side channel to exfiltrate information from processes running in parallel on the same physical core. Now, they were able, as I already said, to execute this port smash vulnerability on Skylake and KB Lake out of the box, but as I've already said, they strongly suspect that AMD CPUs are also going to be uh, impacted as well. And they say, quote, for other SMT architectures, customizing the strategies and or waiting times in SPY is likely needed. So what do they actually suggest to circumvent this for the moment? Well, they are yet to publish the full research paper detailing this latest vulnerability. So do keep your eyes peeled for that. Obviously, I would expect a response from Intel and AMD if they are indeed impacted like the researchers actually suspect quite soon. Perhaps we'll get microcode updates and that sort of thing. But for now they have suggested to quote disable SMT hyperthreading in the BIOS and to quote upgrade to open SSL 1.1.1 or 1.1.0 as potential fixes. Now as I said we would reasonably expect a response from Intel soon, but apparently they did actually notify Intel about these new vulnerability last month, but they have yet to respond to the new attack or offer any fixes at the moment, but it's entirely possible they just don't have a response yet, they don't have a fix yet, that sort of thing. I mean, this is why that whole rise and fall thing was such a big controversy not too long ago, because they gave AMD basically no notice, like, or a chance to respond or even say, hey, look, we're working on it or anything, so... Don't get out of the pitchforks just yet, but hopefully we do see a response from Intel. So, yeah. I will include a link to the ZDNet um, sorry, ZDNet.com article in the description below this video if you wish to give it a read. But I've pretty much given you the cliff notes of what's going on here. And as I said, the full research paper has yet to be revealed, or released should I say, but... As soon as it is, you know, obviously give that a give that a crack and uh, hopefully by then we'll have some sort of response. We'll have to see. So not exactly brilliant that we've got yet another security vulnerability for Intel, especially on Skylake and KB Lake. Because while KB Lake obviously didn't sell like hotcakes or anything, it's still a fairly popular processor. And Skylake, of course, well, you know, doesn't need to be explained how popular that particular line was. So, yeah, not, not, not so hot. Anyway, let's finish up, shall we, with something from Oculus Rift. So you may have seen the reports last week by TechCrunch where the Oculus co-founder Brendan Areeve decided to leave due to his quote fundamentally different views on the future of Oculus and this was surrounding the cancellation of the next gen Rift 2 project which was basically a complete redesign of the original Rift headset but this was due to the fact that Facebook, who obviously purchased Oculus eons ago, it feels like, decided to focus more on accessibility improvements to the core Rift experience and also work on the fact that at the moment you have to have the latest PC hardware in order to function. Obviously, Brendan didn't agree with this direction, at least according to the sources of TechCrunch, and he was not really interested in, quote, offering compromised experiences that provided short-term user growth but sacrificed on comfort and performance. So instead of doing the Rift 2 like they originally planned, a complete overhaul as I already said, they're going to be something a bit more modest, they update if you will by the name of Rift S which is going to be released early next year at least according again to the sources. So again this is an upgrade, it's going to be minor improvements to the device's display resolution while getting, getting rid of the external sensor tracking system and will instead utilize a integrated inside out tracking system which is probably going to kind of get rid of the need for quite a, so much space and obviously all the cables and all that sort of stuff and, the, and all that sort of other thing, all those other things, excuse me, that have been definitely levied against both this and the Vive as well. 
So if they were to use this new system, which is going to be called Insight, it's going to be much more simplified to set up. And again, that has been a definite downside to the first generation of the Rift. And might notably also reduce the space requirements for a VR headset to actually function properly. Now, obviously, this does come with a caveat. They do have greater limitations when it comes to lighting conditions they work in, and obviously not going to be as accurate as an external tracker as well. So there is that to keep in mind. Now, this is essentially giving the manufacturers a chance to reduce VR's high barrier to entry, which, as I've said many, 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 many times now, is the main thing that I think is really stopping VR from becoming like the next big thing. Now the lack of killer games is definitely an issue and obviously that's a very subjective opinion. You may disagree but while there are games like Resident Evil 7 and so on and so forth there's not enough to warrant the high cost especially given the hardware that you need to run one of these damn things as well. So at least, if you can at least reduce the cost of the headset and reduce the cost of the hardware required to run VR you can make it more accessible and obviously again those space requirements if you have a small studio flat or whatever you're not really going to be having the room to be putting up a VR headset like a Rift or indeed the Vive. So while it's not it is a shame rather to not see a sort of big next gen leap like we were expecting to see i think definitely reducing that cost is something that is not a foolish move even slightly that is something that they really really need to focus on obviously not at the cost of giving us a good experience you know you don't want a thing that feels cheap or anything like that you don't think that's not really tracking your movements correctly especially given that it's going to cause motion sickness problems and that sort of thing but we do need to focus on that, I think, as one of the prime goals, as well as, of course, improving on the technology. You know, after this, we can then get Rift 2 with these improvements, as well as whatever else the future does bring to us. So, yeah, that's my personal take on this. But there is going to be a link to the source, which, again, is techcrunch.com in the description below this video. That is me done for this very same video. Thank you so much for watching. Your support really does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. And I'll see you next time.